Ooh, that's good. Oh, hi there. I was just enjoying this martini made with aviation gin and sipping on this smooth drinky poo. I can't stop thinking of probably the most unexpected pioneer of pop marketing in the past 10 years. That's right. All hail Ryan Reynolds, actor, comedian, film producer, screenwriter, entrepreneur, and pop marketer? Yeah, I mean, it's true. Maybe best known for inspiring my sixth year of college with Van Wilder or playing everyone's favorite fourth wall breaking anti hero Deadpool. What you probably don't know is that he's also an exceptionally potent pop marketer. On this special edition of the Pop 100, I'm going to tell Ryan Reynolds' pop marketer origin story, breaking down how this Canadian born Hollywood heartthrob went from Blade 3 to pop marketer of the decade. But before we go all the way back to the beginning, Let's tell a short story about late 2019 when Aviation Gin here sets a new bar in culture-jacking marketing stunts by drafting off of Peloton's now infamous holiday ad that had become a fully-fledged internet debacle with its perceived inauthentic portrayal of a Peloton wife. So in comes Aviation Gin, which is actually owned by Ryan Reynolds, and in not in some celebrity paid spokesperson cheeseball sort of way. He's really an extremely involved owner who spearheads the marketing promotion for, for all of his products. So within 36 hours of Peloton's dumpster catching fire, Aviation Gin, powered by Ryan Reynolds' own production company, Maximum Effort Production, with absolutely zero permissions from Peloton, had tracked down the actress that played the Peloton wife, hired a crew, acquired a location, wrote and produced the now famous clapback video launched by a single tweet from Ryan Reynolds' Twitter account. Backed with zero traditional paid media, this hijack racked up 10 million YouTube views in a week, as well as untold millions of dollars in global PR coverage from Jimmy Fallon to Good Morning America. In a day, Ryan Reynolds' team had taken all of the pent-up negative cultural tension focusing on Peloton, and like some kind of magical marketing judo master, they had almost instantly deflated all of that negative public tension, turning all of that negative energy into positive emotional connection for this brand right here. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it. Check out Peloton stock over this exact time period. Commercial catches fire on the internet, stock plunges over $1 billion in value. And then the day after Ryan Reynolds' Aviation Gin parody follow-up vid blows up, boink, back up and running, baby. Hey, CEOs, if you don't think popular culture has an effect on your bottom line, hint, look over there. So if you just apply focus on the stunt by itself, it can easily appear as one of those one in a million marketing moves. However, when you spend as many hours as I do researching Ryan Reynolds on the internet you discover that this isn't some cosmic marketing Hail Mary, but just the most recent example of a breed of marketing that Reynolds and his team have been cooking up for about the last six years. I call Reynolds' particular style of pop marketing the Deadpool method. But to understand how the Deadpool method works and exactly how we got to the Aviation Gen Peloton flip, we got to go back six years to where it all began. Yep, I am talking about the superhero film genre Cinderella story of, you got it, Deadpool. It's hard to imagine a world without Deadpool, but in 2015, the idea of a Deadpool feature film was 100% dead in the water. The, the character of Deadpool, uh, portrayed again by Ryan Reynolds, had been poorly utilized in the tragically disappointing 2009 Wolverine Origins. Yikesies. And Ryan Reynolds' superhero prowess was still uh, a bit bruised, let's say, from starring in the 2011 box office stinker Green Lantern. You see, to the Hollywood movie executives, the idea of sinking money into a standalone Deadpool feature film was uh, unimaginable. But Reynolds saw something special in the character, and he then worked with director Tim Miller to produce three minutes of test footage in hopes to woo execs into understanding Deadpool's potential. Though that three minutes was super cool, it did absolutely nada to persuade movie execs to invest millions into the character. So the idea just was going to sit there, destined to become the movie that never was. Well, that is until someone leaked that test footage on the internet. 
even though Reynolds or Miller still won't fess up to the actual act, the test footage somehow found its way on the internet, and the internet's response to the leaked film was so thunderously positive that it literally willed the standalone Deadpool movie back from the dead and straight into production. Okay, pause it right there. That was it. Yeah, th that, that was the moment where Ryan Reynolds figured out a big part of his marketing equation. He had used the internet as a cheat code, bypassing the traditional red tape of Hollywood by going directly to the source, the audience themselves. This is a bottom-up mentality, building a groundswell that can push an idea up and out into the mainstream. But there was still a catch. Yeah, the Deadpool movie was now greenlit, but the budget was going to be extremely low. Therefore, the marketing budget was going to be almost non-existent. Okay, at this point, Reynolds was fully committed to seeing this project succeed. So he actually embedded himself within Fox's marketing team. It was here that Ryan is introduced to this dude. Uh, this is George Dewey. He was the SVP head to digital marketing for Fox at the time. George had almost 20 years of experience as a creative at McCann. So it was this union, this combination of Ryan Reynolds' new understanding of the relationship of celebrity and fandom in the internet, and Dewey's deep understanding of how ideas work and are brought to life, that created that spark needed for the Deadpool method to be born. The big idea for the Deadpool marketing campaign was to take the Deadpool character outside of his imaginary reality and then inject him directly into internet culture. It soon became clear that Deadpool's campaign acted more like a virus. It spread through popular culture via the internet and people's social feeds. A costume reveal that was a throwback reference to Burt Reynolds' iconic Playgirl centerfold, announcing the much-anticipated R rating, of the movie by unleashing Deadpool on A.C. Slater, violently. Uh, even Betty White wasn't safe from Deadpool's contamination of popular culture. Once in a generation, a movie comes along that your whole family will love. If your family is a f***ed up group of kissing inbreds. To take full advantage of this idea of a Deadpool infection, they made an extra Deadpool suit for Ryan Reynolds so he could have one on him at all times, so if an opportunity showed itself, Reynolds could just pop on the suit and roll with it. Even traditional advertising like Out of Home had been tainted. This billboard went up in one spot in Hollywood, California, yet it completely blew up all over the internet, uh, making it seem like this campaign was everywhere. The marketing team in Reynolds was very much thinking about taking over the actual calendar. Deadpool invaded Valentine's Day, Australia Day, uh, even Chinese New Year, though the film had actually been banned in China. Even Christmas, or maybe especially Christmas, wasn't safe, as they seemingly took over the internet for 12 days with 12 different stunts over three hours of content. Oh, and this is also where that now legendary faux Hugh Jackman Twitter beef began. The, the shtick was that Ryan Reynolds was still pissed at Hugh Jackman for ruining the Deadpool character on the Wolverine origin movie, and, and this friendly warfare would later seep into, well, the next Wolverine movie, into Deadpool 2, and actually even jump over into aviation gin marketing. So uh, what were the results of the first go at the Deadpool method of marketing? Well, not shabby. All in, the movie cost Fox $58 million. After all was said and done, Deadpool brought in $782,612,155 worldwide. That's a 13x return on an R-rated movie about comic books that accomplished it with relatively no budget or traditional promotional resources. And that, my friends, is why Deadpool didn't just change how movies were marketed, but how everything was going to be marketed. Daddy needs to freshen up his yum-yum juice. Um, sorry for the cliffhanger. This one's going to have to be a two-parter. So after the staggering success of Deadpool 1, can the Deadpool method be repeated? Will Reynolds and Dewey be able to scale the Deadpool method as it goes from no budget to almost endless resources in Deadpool 2? And the biggest question of all, can the Deadpool method work outside of Deadpool and even outside of movies and entertainment? You'll just have to wait until next decade to find out, true believers. I'm Joe Cox, the Pop Marketer. This is the Pop 100. Hit up pop-marketer.com and join my newsletter to get even more tales of pop culture and brand mutant baby ideas. And happy new year, you filthy animal. It really is smooth.